Joe Cornish has travelled all over the world to photograph awe-inspiring landscapes, but has rediscovered the sublime landscape of the North York Moors and Jurassic coastline of Staves, Whitby, Ravenscar, Scarborough and Saltwick now. Joe connects deeply to the landscape, you can see it in his eyes. His images are not sentimental evocations of a time gone by, but a reminder of what we will all lose if we, as custodians, neglect our environmental responsibilities. Joe is a witness to our times. His photographs are a statement, a case for the prosecution, against those who ignore the science and the wonder of children whose world may one day disappear. So let's, can I just pick up on the idea then, you know, the, the last um, year has been quite difficult for people with the pandemic and COVID. Um, and it's definitely had an effect on me as a painter. What has been the effect on you as a landscape photographer? I, I think it's been really good. <laughs> I know that's strange to say it, but I... It's nearly two years since I was last here because of, of the lockdown. And it's really interesting to see how the beach has changed. The beach has changed a lot and so on. Uh, in terms of, I mean, in terms of photography and in terms of art, you know, having a revelation day is, doesn't happen that often. I, I, wish, I wish it happened every day, but, um, so I wouldn't say that that has happened, but I've learned more about the place, definitely. What, what it actually done is made be, maybe, maybe appreciate your own location. Yeah, and it's not that I didn't appreciate it before. It, it's just that uh, it's just they didn't really have time before uh, to get into it in, in depth in the way that I have. So I've discovered all sorts of little new, uh, well, they're not new anything. Of course, it's old trees mainly and very, very, very old rocks and, and little corners and perspectives that previously I had no reason to, to make, make images of. Peter Hicks, locked away in his North York Moor studio, watches the seasons drift past his window. He listens to the sounds of the curlew, of rain, snow, wind and hailstone that batters the tin roof. This is music of the landscape that accompanies his working day, where he rediscovers the joy of sketchbooks, reading and painting from studies completed out on the moors over a year ago. He is lost in time, reflective, relying on memory and imagination to ignite a creative spark that lights up the studio in a frenzy of activity. Shadows cast onto the wall, illuminated by the gas fire, are silent, ghost-like, as his day consumed by the winter's night leaves him exhausted, ready to sleep, and to dream about another day in the landscape. There is poetry in Peter's work, but also in his sketchbooks. Peter, now in his 80s, has used lockdown to unlock memories and to provide inspiration you for new work. This. this is a crazy sketch. I can have a look at that, yeah? Yeah. It really is. Can I have a look at this? Yeah. You won't be head and tail a bit, I don't think. <laughs> and what, this sketchbook piece it was building over how long a period? How long, how long did it take to fill the sketchbook in? Well, I think it was about a fortnight. fortnight. Because I, I didn't just, I only went to it at certain times in the day. And then I would go and read as well. Um, where is the little catch, the outside catch? Ah, yeah. uh, wrong, it's upside down. There we are. There's two poems in there as well. One that was done, around, uh, written about the same time as um, I did that first sketchbook. And, and it was, it was, I was in the garage and I could hear next door's, uh, one of next door's children fingering on the piano. And it's um, just simply describing how the sensations of the sound affected me. And then there's a little poem at the back which is in, it's very tiny, but it's still in a sense in two parts because the first part was written some time ago 
And the second part was related to the behaviour of my second wife. I'll just read it to you, if you give it me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, very short, of course, as you can see. I can see you, book in hand, coffee at your elbow, in the half-light, at a window seat, tracing lines through misted glass. That's all there is to it. Was, that the, was this this house? Um, of this, it was a cafe. cafe. I was always to meet her in the cafe. She'd been to a bookshop. She got herself a book. She got herself a coffee. She sat in the window seat, often on days like this in the sun. That was Annie. I can see you, book in hand, coffee at your elbow, in the half light at a window seat, tracing lines through misty glass. The bit in the half light at a window seat, tracing that through, that came first and the beginning bit came afterwards because it so sums up what Annie was like. That was her personality. Tessa Bunny, she tells stories about people eking a living from the landscape. From daffodil pickers in Lincolnshire to cockle fishermen in Morecambe Bay, she misses the interaction between people and place. She reflects upon a landscape in lockdown close to the world, except to just a few, eulogising about the honesty, integrity and resolution of men and women who simply have no choice but to risk life and limb to earn a living. Her images capture a way of life that perhaps one day will disappear. So a timely reminder of the transience of life and the challenges of lockdown and the beauty of the world we all live in. Nice. So how has lockdown affected you then? Um, well, at different, at different times. I mean, uh, uh, firstly, all my um, exhibitions, work, everything got cancelled. There was no, all the magazines went to like millimetres thick, you know, there was no commissions or anything. And then during the summer, it went a bit strange again because the national newspapers and magazines and I got three or four new clients yeah. and because they wanted local people. So even a, a Liberation in yeah. France commissioned me to go to Whitehaven to photograph yeah. the you know, there's a new coal mine. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah. you know, they were looking for someone. Controversial coal mine. Yeah, very controversial, yeah. but the local people want it. Yeah, yeah. But so they, so I went there, that was a new client that they found me somewhere yeah. online and they were looking for someone relatively local. In yeah. fact, they thought I was in, based in Grange over Sands, which, because yeah. I hadn't changed my um, thing. So I sneaked in there yeah. a little bit, but like that happened. So I ended up with more of that kind of work. I mean, I've still got no, pros well, I've got one exhibition that got canceled or postponed until this June. I don't know if it's going to go ahead, yeah. but basically, I don't make a living from exhibitions anyway, so it's more your own personal projects that are now put on yeah. hold. So in, terms um, of stuff, so in terms of your work locally then, I mean, we, you know, we've all been um, stopped from traveling, and rightly mm. so. Uh, so have you found that the local landscape, North York Moors and Saltburn, it's been quite an exciting location to work, and have you found something different in this location that you probably didn't spot before, now, now you've spent more time here? Yeah, a little bit. I haven't really done a lot of work, um, my own projects, during lockdown. I did something about furloughed workers right. and an asparagus farm. Right. I haven't been one of those photographers that's photographed people at windows or... <laughs> I've photographed a few bits and pieces yeah. and, you know, I came to yeah. Saltburn once or twice in the first lockdown, you know, and did that, you know, the beach was empty then. It's not like this lockdown where yeah. it's packed. Yeah. It was really different then, but I was quite spooked out by the whole thing and yeah. I didn't want to travel and everything. Yeah. But this time, you know, I've just tried to carry on yeah. I mean, um, we, working. We're working, but, though, aren't you? I mean, yeah. we, we are allowed to travel because we're working. But there was a lot of pressure with photographers yeah. and a lot of abuse online yeah. for photographers that went off. They, some people think doing your personal projects is not right. a good enough excuse. And then, right. so everyone went into some kind of 
internalised it, you know, no sharing of work. They did it or they didn't do it, but they didn't tell anybody. And so do you think this, uh, that's interesting, because interesting, I, I must admit I did the same thing. You know, I was up on the moors painting, but I didn't tell anybody I was doing it, because mm. I didn't feel I was able to. Did you think it was because you were doing something wrong? Um, like at the bottom of it? A little bit of both, really. Yeah, I think that's how I felt, really. Yeah, and I know one of my friends had a really, really abusive, really? and he's done an amazing piece of work about lock, diff, the different lockdowns and how it affects round where he is in the northwest coast and stuff. Yeah. And you know, in the bigger picture. Who's that? Um, his name's Henry Eden. Yeah. Oh, you, did you say you know him? Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, we chatted oh, yeah. a few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I just felt for him, and I gave him yeah. as much support like yeah. online as I could because yeah. I just think it was really, really bad. Right. Well, yeah. how, he, he seemed to have experienced that very yeah. extremely, but the work that he's produced yeah. and the bigger picture of yeah. the history of Brit Britain yeah. and what yeah. happened yeah. is going to be so valuable. Well,